Meet the Matthewsons. They're a dynasty of dealers. It drives really well. With a love of classics. Ah, it's only condensation. Yeah. In Thornton the Dale, gateway to the North York Moors, they auction over 2,000 rare vehicles every year. 42,000 the ready type, the stunning car. All walks of life, the cars fetch people together. I'm ecstatic. Head of the family, Derek. It's got to be the best job ever, isn't it? We're sort of living a dream. Trusted lieutenants, sons Paul. Not everybody's cup of tea. And Dave. There's Dad's way. And there's Dad's way. <laughs> Keeping them all in check and dealing with the punters, Sarah. Somebody could ring today with some fabulous vehicle that's been sat in a barn for 50 years. You have no clue. It's the chase, it's fine then. So you get up every morning thinking, what am I going to find today? This is a family's love affair with cars that have lived a life. Someone's cherished a car and loved it, and I think it's just great. I think it's absolutely superb. A passion that can be turned into brass. sale this week. What do you buy a lady that's got everything? Morris Marine of 1972. Nice Christmas yeah. present. 1981 Rover SD1. I don't think I've ever had a car as nice as this one. Jag 240. Sweeney car. Well, the one they chased, of course. There's a boot loaded with gold, then. I don't know. Shall we have a look? No. Give me anything retro, anything that's a vile colour. I'd drive it. It's auction week. The site's full. And it's time for Derek to say no to any more cars. This guy's just rang. From Beedale, only 24,000 okay, miles from you. We want. Yes, but I have told him, Derek. You can't get it in this cell. I told him that we're full. We've got nowhere to put it. Thursday. All day, every day, um, until uh, five or six o'clock or something. Make that eight or nine o'clock, do Bring it tomorrow. That's the best thing. No. Yeah. All right, mate. See you later, Dave. So you said yeah. All right. After I said no. Right, Have no. a little go. No, I'm not going to try again because I can't do it. <laughs> With another low mileage vehicle on its way. A rare and valuable 1971 Aston Martin DB6 is giving up its special space for the incoming classic. A Mosarina, 1971. From 43,000 miles from now. And garage stores for 16 years. The classic uh, marina is owned by Richard Winter. And it's never been welded or never been restored. We're in very good nick for the year of it for a 47 year old car. Totally original, one owner from new. It may be in good nick, but all the bits aren't in the right place. Your stick looks a bit short, Richard. It is, the gearbox side that's in the boot, the clutch is gone. Where's the gearbox there? Totally original, look. So obviously you take it off and put it in the boot? Yeah, when the clutch is gone, yeah, because the man took it apart, left it and never did put it back together. What happened to the rear window, Richard? I don't know really, to tell you the truth, it got smashed out with it being stored. Just a 1.3, cheap to run, easy to fix. Do you want to buy it? <laughs> with Ford bringing out a string of decent family cars, British Leyland hit back with the Marina. Built at Morris's dated Cowley Works, it had issues from the start. But BL loyal Brits bought plenty. Over a million, if you include the ITAL. Now, only a few hundred remain. Making it one of Britain's most scrapped cars. But they have many fans, and its door handle is a design classic, 
that you can see on Reliant Scimitars and the Lotus Esprit. I can just see the top of that marina. Gosh, that's a bit of a throwback, isn't it? Derek's trying to stay positive. You've got no gearbox in it. It's in the boot. Oh, that's handy. Yeah. I normally put them in the boot, yeah. Well, it's a lot more handy. It's a lot handier when, uh, when you want to take them out again. They're just there. 43,000. 43,000? That's proper, yeah. One only. How many times it been round? None. Are you sure? Been in the shed for 16 years. Since 2002. As it happens, I think you're right. Oh. So she's definitely a non-runner then? Yeah, non-runner. This is no Aston Martin. But it's still a piece of British motoring history. Straight to steering. There's someone for everything. Someone will snap it up. They will queue up for it. Father and son, Derek and Paul, are both on the road to collect a double wedge of motoring heritage. I suppose, really, they were the poor man's jag, so consequently they weren't treasured, you know, they were just used. And most have just been worked to death or rotted away. Derek's on his way to the Lancashire Pennines to collect a 1985 Rover SD1. 2.6 litre engine in Moonraker. Paul's on the Yorkshire side of the hills in Huddersfield, picking up its big brother. We're now going uh, to see Mr. Turner, who has got a Rover SD1 SE. In ferro gold, a three and a half litre V8, complete with 80s accessories. Quite a rare car because a lot of them, like a lot of things, then rusted away. So to find a nice one, a few and far between now. We've got a big V8 engine, 3.5 litre. Should have twin SU carburetors on it, but it's uh, been changed to a big Holly carburetor. Uh, so it's quite a bit quicker than normal. Sounds good, doesn't it? You're in a time warp when you're inside it. Absolute. 80s paradise in there, it's like brown, uh, almost corduroy inside. Obviously a few period modifications on it, like the wheels aren't original. The front and rear spoiler is probably done back in the 80s. You know, top of the range car, I think when they were new, I think it was about 11 or 12,000 pounds back in the day. Paul likes these cars. Yeah, I've got an SD1, yeah. I think because you don't see many of them, that they are so rare, aren't they? It's good and practical, and chuck the kids in and go and do 100 miles in it and get out just like you can out of a modern car, really. Launched in 1976, the Specialist Division 1 was a hit. It won European Car of the Year. Labour Prime Minister Jim Callaghan was driven round in the British Leyland Rover. Mrs Thatcher favoured a Jag. The build quality of early models was poor, as BL struggled with the changing world of car making. But they sold more than 300,000 of them. And the SD1 V8 is considered by many to be the last true Rover. In Lancashire... Spot these out well. Classic car restorer Terry Bullas is selling the 2.6 Rover for a client. It's all right. It's not bad. He's passed on buying it for himself. One's getting at now, don't it? Ah, just a bit of work on it. Terry's a connoisseur of cars, which is why it's not tucked up in his garage and staying there. <laughs> it needs someone who's going to love it, a bit of TLC, and, uh, and address these bits and pieces like these door shuts and these door skins and things like that. Less desirable than the V8, it could fetch around £4,500 at auction. There's buying and keeping cars and there's selling cars, and it's a selling car. It's a nice selling car. I wouldn't buy it and keep it, but a lot of people would. And after they've been around looking at misdescribed rubbish, then when they come and see this, they'll be very, very pleased. In his collection, Terry has a lot of keeping cars worth looking at. This is where the keeping vehicles are kept, Terry, isn't it? 
and trucks. Absolutely lovely. Yeah, they were made for to deliver in job. Right? Easy in and easy out. Yeah, that's right. This is an Austin Champ. Quick, very quick. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're nippy things, aren't they? Yeah. Look at, look at that. Yeah, straight, isn't it? Ah. Yeah, it's level. Yeah. Yeah. What are you selling it then? No. <laughs> In Huddersfield? John, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How's well, tricks? Yeah, yeah, good. How are you? John Turner and the more desirable V8. I'm hoping to get about five or six thousand pounds for it. It looks an eyeful, doesn't it? Looks a nice thing. Uh, yeah, it's not everybody's colour, but that's no. the 80s, that's the 80s for you, isn't it? Well that's from, yeah. <laughs> so look at the phone. <laughs> John's got that well-documented can't-stop-buying-classic-cars syndrome. I've had it, I've done a few shows in it, and I've driven it a bit, but um, I've got a, a Volvo Amazon, that, well, I've got two Volvo Amazons, so in pretty bad state, so I'm working on them, and uh, this reel has got to go help me fund them. I don't think I've ever had a car as nice as this one. Yeah, over here a bit, John. Yeah. I will regret it, probably. I've regretted selling. I've had a few old cars, and a lot of them I've regretted selling, so this will be no different. With the Morris Marina and the two Rovers ready for auction, Derek is in a reflective mood about British car builders from yesteryear. Yeah, were built to fall apart, weren't they? British Leyland, to be honest, lost the, the, the British car manufacturing market on their own. They didn't need any help. At least the gold SD1 is up to scratch. I think it's a nice example, this. Very, very smart car, isn't it? Lovely colour. Nice thing about that car, it still smells like an SD1. Definitely smells. If, um, I'll have to do this experiment one day. You have to blindfold me and take me around a few cars and wind the window down and pop me head in there and, and I'll tell you what it is because they, they've got that smell. And... But yeah, that is SD1, no question about it at all. Absolutely lovely. There she is, big old V8. Basically a Buick. Very, very reliable. Do a mega miles, very strong. Uh, and still popular in the specials and the kit cars today. I mean, everyone puts a Rover V8 in if you can get hold of one. It's auction day. There you go. Morning, David. Yeah. Sleep all right? Yes, yeah, sleep all right down there. I'm a little bit behind. And in the yard, potential buyers for the Morris Marina are playing Hunt the Gearbox. Oh, we can go and get your boxes in the food. <laughs> it's quite an early one, and being the, the two door coupe, uh, you don't see as many of them now. So I'm just thinking I'll keep my eye on it and see what happens. Yeah, it's, it's a worthwhile proposition. It is. At the right money. At the right mm -hmm. money. It's got to be right money. Has it been come from far, this lad, you know? I wouldn't know, to be honest. You don't know. It's caught the eye of mechanic Spike Hayward from Hornsey. He used to work on them when new. No. I can see our Christmas present. Uh, <laughs> I can see it. She'll love it. It could be the perfect gift for his wife. My parents had a marina and she loved it when she was a little girl. And now she's quite a big girl and she's older. She always goes on about a marina. So I thought, nice Christmas yeah. present. She'll love me even more than she does now. <laughs> Not in a lot. <laughs> Spy reckons it's all fixable, if you can find all the bits. Starter motor's under the seat, there's no battery on it. We don't appear to have any keys, but it's all resolvable for the right price. You get it running in a day, you know, but then you've got all sorts of other stuff, I need glass to do, you know, fettle it up and sort it, and your brakes to sort out, but it's all doable, isn't it? It's all old fashioned, you know, it's all repairable, isn't it? I would seriously buy this today, definitely. Such is his commitment to the cause, Spikes decided to submit a pre auction bid. Nine hundred pounds. We'll look at the marina for my wife. I, I should put that on the Christmas wish list. Actually. Yeah. Not yet, but you might just put it on there for. Yeah. Her. Um, okay. It's a 1972 marina, 1300. I bet the mileage is right. Can't guarantee it. Make your own mind up about it. Where we're going to be? Start me on it. Five. 500, 600, 700, 708, 800 pound, 800, 800 pound, 900, 900 pound, 9, 900 pound for the first, second, third, last time, 900.
900 pound it'll sell the car is spikes it's going to be a christmas to remember for his lucky wife caroline she was probably thinking i holiday in australia or somewhere but uh, nah. <laughs> she's uh she's gonna end up with a marina This is a rare car, actually. Derek is on a double date. And first up, there's Thomas and a car with a split identity. Oh, my word, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh dear. Well, we're looking at an unusual one here. It's uh, started life as a 13, 60 year old estate. I'll be right in saying that, Les, won't I? Yeah. And someone's grafted in a, a straight six, which they put in the test. It would have had a, a little four cylinder engine which would have sat in there about there, wouldn't it, Les? Yeah. With a bit of room back and front. Um, this one's obviously taken up all the room, but um, at least the room's there for it to take up, isn't it? Will it fire up? Yeah, it's an oddball, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's going to appeal to someone, but not many, you know, Les. I'll give it a go for you, but I mean, uh, it is strange. It's a flying machine, I bet, isn't it? But it goes well. There were about 20 Vitesse estates made up by a dealer in Park Royal, North London, and plenty of copies followed. Derek's first date never made it into full production. The next one, however, was a big hit. 240 Jag. Good looking car, aren't they? Not so bad at all. A lot of crazing on the wing here, look. So the only way to get rid of that, it's a bit like that Harold Limit got the same problem there is strip it back. Bare metal, it's the only thing you can do. They go quite badly around here, but uh, they're not so bad. Someone will do that. It would do really, really well. Make very good money if it was immaculate. It's, um, looks like it's got the makings of a nice car. Nice wood inside, manual overdrive. So I think put door bottom on the offside front, door bottom on the near side rear. The rest of it will just cut out bits and pieces. Quite simple, really. The 240 was the final budget price fling for these classic Jaguar lines. It was an old school bargain. Jaguar owners were changing. In the late 60s, the furs and jewels may not have been your own. It's always associated with bank robberies. The last 240 rolled off the line in 1969, and the era of the bigger XJ Jags had arrived. Too small in the back for a bank job anyway, aren't they? You know, by the time you get two burly fellas and a load of money bags and no room left. These days, it's chequered history only adds to the appeal. Now then, Keith. Yeah. yeah. Nice but even thing. Keith realises it's not for everyone. It's a 1960s car. It's difficult to drive in modern traffic. It's expensive to maintain. It uses a lot of petrol but there are a lot of people around about who like an old car, and I used to be one of them. And now I'm getting too old to use it, so I'm selling it. I don't want it to go, but it will have to. Yeah, nice old thing. Looks very straight, doesn't it? Crank her up, then. See if she'll go. Enough, isn't it? You must have had the wood done, Keith. Door cappings and this bit. Yeah. That yeah. was done before I got it. Yeah. They did a nice job, didn't they? It's very good, yeah. Smart, aren't they? Money wise, what do you think? Whatever. I personally think it's worth seven grand. Yeah, I think I'd be happy with that. Yeah. And here's something you don't get with a new car a proper toolkit. That is absolutely lovely, yeah. Feeler gauges. There, 25 thou there for your plugs. In there. There we are. Let's get it out, mate. 25 thou for that. And 15 thou for the points. Full toolkit there in one go, Keith, isn't it? For anybody who's daft enough to... I used to do it for a living, you know. Did you? Yeah. Served me time as a motor mechanic. Oh, well, we know what you're about then, don't you? Yeah. The Jag in its toolbox has cheered Derek up, and it's not over yet. Keith's got a surprise for him out back. Oh, my word. Oh, crumbs. Yeah, you've got a fair old workshop here, mate, haven't you? This is a bit I wanted to show you. 
1923, Gardner two-stroke diesel, stationary engine. Blimey, Gardner. Mm -hmm. How about that? That's lovely, isn't it? Something like that would drive a workshop like this, wouldn't it? Years back. It would. You yeah. know, power it all, belts everywhere, all over the spot, different machinery and such like. I keep looking to try and find another one like it. Yeah, no, you won't do, will you? Can't be that many of them about. As the Jag goes off for a new life, there's mixed feelings. Yes, I'm sorry to go. It's been around a long time, you know. 18 years around that. Speak to you soon. Yeah. Ta-da. It's auction day, and Derek is already selling. So start me on it. There we are, lot number one. Let's get off. Whereabouts? Come on, where? And the Rovers are bringing back memories, both good... When we were kids, we used to drive my father's friend's V8 Rover around the field. We used to have great fun with it. And bad. British Leyland, wasn't it? You know, so the, if you got a car built on a Friday, you're in trouble, sort of thing. Usually rusted by now. But I think they're becoming quite collectible now, and this one's a particularly good model, I feel. I like the, uh, the chrome trim on the wing mirrors. It's quite an unusual feature. Seeing one now, it kind of makes me want one. Whether I buy it or not is another thing. First up, the tidiest, but smaller engined model. And on to the SD1, the 2600 SD1. Smells like you, feels like you, got all the history to back it all up. She's out there, conditions speak for itself. It's lovely. Three. 3250, 3250, 35, 3500, 35, 3500, 3500, 35, 3500, 3500, 1981 Rover SD1 3500 SC in gold, as you can see. Where are we going to be with that? John's one? here to watch it sell. We're off again. Four, four, we're off, straight off. No press, no messing. Four, four, two, four, 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 six, four, six, four, six, four, eight, four thousand eight hundred, five, five thousand, five thousand pound going then. Five thousand one, five thousand one on there, on the phone. Five two, five thousand two hundred, five three, five thousand three on the phone, five thousand three. 5,003, I'm out. 5,300 for the first. 5,3 for the second. 5,3, third and last time provisionally. 5,300. A phone bidder comes out top again. Just 200 pounds off the mark. I thought it might have made him a little bit more money, but I'm more or less happy with what he's made. After a negotiation with Sarah, John decides to let it go for 5,300. <laughs> Right, brilliant, excellent. See you next time. Can't wait. Right, cheers. All done, everybody's happy, yeah. Hopefully, he'll love it, so should do. It's really nice. So, yeah, it's been a good day. Millions of people every year flock to the Yorkshire countryside to take in the beautiful scenery. Part of its appeal are the twisting, winding lanes with their dry stone walls. At the garage, the least appropriate car for a delightful Dales drive has arrived. It's a Buick LeSabre from 1959, and it's causing some interest. I love these big old Yanks. We, we restored one of these a oh, yeah, couple right. of years ago, and I really liked it. And I thought, if ever I see one, maybe. And this is the first one I've seen um, since that time, so... I had to look at it. Martin Morocco is a professional car restorer and with the help of Ryan has rebuilt countless classics. I've got a shed full of cars. <laughs> Do I need another one? Well, this is two cars, isn't it, in one? He'd like to get a closer look at the interior of this five and a half metre monster, but there's been a schoolboy error. The keys are locked in the ignition. Who was that? My father. What a dipstick. Derek, the guilty man. Windows are tight, aren't they? Yeah. 
and there's no door handles. This is, this is a rather large problem. They resort to some dubious tricks of the trade. No evidence of a misspent youth. Uh, mind the paintwork? Oh, no. I notice you've not been uh, sort of stopped, you know, there seems to be plenty of people just walking past yes, completely oblivious yeah, 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 to the yeah, fact yeah. that you're trying to nick this car. Yeah, yeah. But in the end, genius will out. Yay! Boom! We're in! Two metres of bench seat, now available for viewing. Has this whole sordid experience put you off then? Not really. But uh, value's gone down then, has it? Up. We've got a key out of it now. We can get in it, in and out. The Jaguar 240 from 1968 has arrived at Matthewson's. Good morning, Joyce. Joyce, there's your lovely lady. Lives up the road. Get away, car, weren't they? There's a boat loaded with gold, then. I don't know. Shall we have a look? No. It's loaded with a lovely history file and some spare keys, which is a bonus. Yeah, Sweeney, here we go. Yeah, get Carter. Yeah. Every film made in the 60s and 70s had one of them, if not a dozen of those. Um, and they were a little bit of a status symbol, 2.4, 3.4 then. If there was a scene in a film where one hit a load of boxes and flipped over, and it was one of them. And it meant that lots of people could relate to them. Values have increased accordingly. But still within reach for the buyer on a budget. It's quite a good value for money. You know, not everybody's got 35,000 quid to put into a fun car for a weekend. You can have just as much fun with five, six, seven, eight thousand quid. It's what I tell people, as you can with 45 or 6,000 quid. You don't need to put loads and loads of cash into something. And that will generate just as much interest as an out of the box stunning car will at 35,000. The success of the business is partly down to the family's connection to a network of highly skilled restorers. Really nice car. We need guys that can turn out cars to that level, love doing it, and do it all the time. One such person is Russ Farnell from Huddersfield. Got an Austin 7. The gentleman, he bought it the day that I took delivery of it. It's just a case of finishing it off, but he's told me not to rush because he's got nowhere to keep it at present. And what's this thing on the rack here? Uh, that's a 2.8 injection Capri, which is, I'm doing for somebody else. Looks like quite a big job. It is. <laughs> Bigger than I thought, but we'll get there. Russ will take anything on, but he has a soft spot for 1930s Morrises. They're easy to get parts for, mainly and they're quite a right, nice little thing to work on. Here's one he renovated earlier, a Morris 8 Tourer from 1936. That's how it arrived at August 16th. It was about 12 months later when I finished it. It's now in mint condition. So we've got the original engine, the original uh, electronics control unit, uh, original dynamo, starter motor, which have all been rebuilt. It's been a labour of love. Nearly eight hours a day for about seven or eight months. Well, hey, this is the old eight then, mate. Two-seater. It's a little bit unusual, isn't it? Derek's here to give it the once-over. All these panels are all brand new, and it's all built on a new ash frame, including that the door frames are new as well. Nice one, yeah. Yeah, nice one. Yeah. yeah it's good, isn't it? I mean, the power weight ratio. Small details can alter the value of any restored vehicle. Have you not got a hood then? No, I've got, the, I've got a hood frame yeah. and, and everything, but I haven't had the hood done yet. Yeah. Um, with a hood, somewhere between 8 and 10, near a 10. Yeah. Turns out a nice car, does our Russ? And it's not the only Morris 8 Derek's here to value. This one has undergone some radical modifications. It was a two-door saloon. Yeah. 
and the back end of it was absolutely rotten. Right. But I thought, you know, it's too good. The front end of that was too good, you know, to yeah, just scrap yeah. it. Absolutely, yeah. So I've rebuilt it and everything as a little pickup. Yeah. It's been skillfully renovated by Russ, but again, a slight tweak could add value. Oh, I know it's more work and all the rest of it, but I'd put 500 quid on that if you put drop sides on it. Or, or even fixed sides and a towel board. Don't have to go ever so high. You've got to think about the bloke who's going to buy it. He maybe wants to put something on it. Just blow that window if I were you. Right. Then someone can put something on the side, can't they? The name and all the rest of it make a hell of a difference, you know. And I don't know what it is, it just looks more manufactured. I think it could do six grand. Derek could just sell the vehicles as they are. Cheers, Derek. Thanks very much. Well, cool, but this way, everyone stands to benefit. He's been in the game a long time, has Derek. And he, you know, he know, he knows what's what. So uh, yeah, I think I'll I'll take his advice. I'll do that and see if we can uh, move her on. It's auction day. Oh, I love it. I love uh, antiques, I love vintage cars, I love collectibles. Anything at all, anything at all. And the Matthewson's garage is rammed with British heritage. I know nothing about cars, but I actually quite like this one, yeah. Including the beautiful Jaguar 240 from the late 60s, which so far has had a lukewarm reception. You like it? Uh, not particularly, no. <laughs> Someone's driven it through a hedge or something. <laughs> Don't know how you can do that, yeah. But retired motor engineer Stan Smith is interested. The door bottoms want a little bit of work, but other than that, it's uh, it's superficial. Fuel cracks in the paint work. Everything fits all right. The bonnet fits well. Windscreen seals are good. Interior is very nice. Everything going for it, really. I think as long as it doesn't make really strong money, I should uh, I should probably buy it. Yeah, yeah. Jag 240, collected it myself. Lovely people. Had classic cars for years. Wants a breather. Do something else for a while. Sweet engine, super thing. Where you gonna be? Five. Got you. Five. Five two. Five four. Five six. Five six. Five eight. Five eight. Six thousand. Six thousand pounds. Should have started here. Six two. Six four. Six four six 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 eight seven thousand seven two seven thousand four hundred seven four outstanding in the seat seven thousand four sold seven thousand four. Stan's plan was good. He's the new owner of the Jag. I thought it would have made a little bit more, but uh, I'm pleased it didn't. Being a Yorkshireman, he's a serial renovator. The Jag will have to take its place in the line. Two or three cars that I'm on with at the moment, so probably paint it all, take the glass out of it. Um, time consuming but not expensive. It might jump the queue, it might not. We'll see how we like it. Next under the hammer, the deceptive Triumph Estate. I'll give it a go for you, but I mean, uh, it is strange. The Herald that thinks it's a Vitesse. Not actually been rude about it, but uh, it wants wants a lot of work on it, you know. Expectations of a sale were low. Now trying for state. Don't sell it any other way. Vitesse on the log book. Start in the hall. 1500 and let's be away then. 15, 15, I've got 15, 16, 17, 1700, 17, 17, 18, 1800 pounds, 18, 19, 19, 2000 on the phone, 2000 pounds. Reserve met in record time, with no sign of the bid slowing down. 3,000, 3,000 pounds, 3,1, 3,2, 3,3, 3,003, 3,004, 3,5, 3,500, 3,006, 3,006, selling, 3,006, what do you think? 3,6, 37, he says, 3,008, 3,008. 3008, it's on sale and going. 3009, 3009, 4000, 4000 pounds. 4000, he's shaking his head, he's thinking, 4000, I'll feel for you. 41, 4100, 4002. Do you want 50? 4250, 4250, 4250, 
Four three. Four thousand three. Should we let him have it? Are you sure? You're not going to be driving home thinking about it, have an accident, are you? Something like that. Four thousand three. I'll run you home if you like. Four thousand three. Sold four three. Thank you very much for your bidding. The phone bidder wasn't going to let the triumph go. And it doubled its reserve price. As for the Jag 240, it's now installed at Stan Smith's Yorkshire home. And it's been pretty well behaved. So other cars in his garage are being renovated first. It's like being in an armchair, isn't it? It's the old school. It's my era. <laughs> Steering is a little bit heavy and there's one or two bits what's sorting out, but uh, it's, it's good. Stan's wife, Pauline, takes a keen interest in the renovation project. I think it's wonderful. It's so comfortable. And it's got beautiful interior. And she usually has the casting vote on which cars stay, which are moved on. I might have to keep it. Her indoors says we're keeping that one, so... Matthewson's cars can end up in the most unexpected places. My name's Brian Lightbody. I'm a retired police officer. I spent the last 12 years of my service in Royal Team Specialist Protection. Brian was once the Queen's bodyguard. He now lives in snowy northern France with his new arrival, the Rover SD1. My history with SD1 Rovers, I suppose you could say, started around about 1978. Uh, my dad was a traffic cop, and I can remember going into his place of work one day, and there's this garage full of these immaculate, brand new Series 1 SD1s all kitted out for traffic duty. There's a picture of me as a 10-year-old in an SD1. Little did I know quite how much of an impact they would have on my life. These days, Brian is an author and a battlefield tour guide. He's had a lifelong love affair with the car. I kind of never really got to drive one properly in anger uh, through my police service, but between 90 and 95, I owned two of my own SD1s, so a blue 26 SE uh, and then a, uh, a green uh, 3.5 V8 uh, Van and Pla, uh, which I kind of bitterly regret <laughs> selling that. He's already spent £2,000 getting the engine running like new. Basically, he's had a new fuel pump, Clutch master cylinder replaced, but most importantly, it's had the hy hydraulic lifters replaced and a new uh, high performance Kent cam. So it's actually putting out 200 brake horsepower on the rolling road, which is about 50 more than the standard 3.5 SE would put out. Brian suspects the car may have seen active duty. There's some anomalies with this car, you know, it's fitted with the George Cowley, as I call it, CI5 type phone on the dashboard. What the origin of that is, I don't know. There's a panel on the centre console that's been blanked off at the back and put down with screws, and it's typical of the way the Met Police used to try to put a car straight before it went to auctions where it's had emergency warning equipment fitted inside. It would be interesting just to find out a little bit about the car's history because it's quite unusual. But, you know, kind of march onwards. I want to use this to do the odd trip back to the UK, take it to, you know, some shows, put some miles on it so that, you know, mechanically it stays good by being run. Yeah, it's an old car, it's always going to have a few things that are going to need doing, it's still not perfect, but it just drives lovely, you know, and um, it brings a smile to my face now. As you were just getting in it just now, we started it up, I thought, that's just, just great, I love the sound of it. Restorer Martin decided against the colossal Buick LeSabre, but it did have others interested on auction day. Are you bad to the bone? I wish. <laughs> Three, 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 fifty, three, three, sold, three thousand three. The fully renovated 1935 Morris 8 pickup eventually arrived at the garage. And thanks to Derek's advice. Put 500 quid on that if you put drop size on it. Then someone can put something on the side, can't they? The name and all the rest of it make a little of a difference, you know. It was a more desirable vehicle. So you what, this is a nice, nice machine, they can hit there. Beautiful. Ray took a shine to it 
and not just because his surname is Morris. My mother used to have a shop and we used to use that to deliver uh, bread and cakes and stuff like that in it. The, the trail and everything at the back is fabulous. Uh, no reserve on the uh, little Morris 8. There we are, start me with it. Whereabouts going to be? 2,000. £2,000, 2250, 25, 2750, 3000 pounds, 3250, 3000 selling, 3250, 35, 3500, you're out M, 3005, 36, 37, 3700, 3700 going, 3008, 3008 for the first, 38 for the second, 3800, third and last time, 3008. Regular Mark Springit was the highest bidder. Who knows what it's worth, but do you know what? If you've got a small business, garden centre, coffee shop, what a great bit of advertising for somebody just to park up outside with the name on it, put some flowers in the back or whatever you want to do. Yeah, it's quirky and it's fun. So how are things progressing with the 1971 Morris Marina? £900 for the first, second, third and last time. Three months ago, Spike Hayward bought it as a present for his wife. She's going to be over the moon on Christmas Day morning. <laughs> I can feel it coming. Yeah. At Santa's workshop in Hornsey, <laughs> the Morris Marina is undergoing a transformation. Yeah, we're getting there. The mechanical bits, gearbox, Brakes, engine, starter motor, battery. That was easy. This isn't very easy. This is hard work. So I'm pleased it moves again. And I've saved it from the grave. Once you buy a lady that's got everything, she's even got me. So give her something she ain't got, something that she really wants. So, yeah. 1300, 1971 Morris Marina. With a bit of luck, we'll have it all spick and span ready for her at Christmas. So. We wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Christmas morning. And Spike's wife is delighted. Until. some sort of engine failure. It's. A minor glitch, but not enough to put Sarah off a humble classic. I'd rather be driving around in a Morris Marina than a Porsche 911. Something that's going to turn your head in the street, but for all the wrong reasons. See how beautiful does this look now? Fancy drive. <laughs>